Hi everybody, Martin the Flickin' Feathers again today. I'm tying another spinner pattern. This is a semi-circle spinner. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for everyone who wants to support the channel, get access to the members only content, and be entered into the giveaways. Right, I've put my hook my vice. It's a size 14. Uh, TMCO 100 barbless. I'm just running on some Uni 8 Ot and Rusty Brown. Now, obviously, you can tie these in different sizes and, and colours. That I've, I mean, here's the same exact same pattern that uh, an 18. Um, the rusty spinner, you know, you just scale up and down the fly to suit. And this this fourteen is probably, you know, sort of the big end of the blue wing olive, the large dark olive, that sort of thing. Um, but just size them to suit where you'll be fishing. Tail, I'm going to use Coq de Leon. Um, And I've got, I don't know, half a dozen fibres here. And the length of the tail can be a couple of body lengths. Right? I mean, and to tell the truth, actual spinners might even have a slightly longer tail. Just put that into the... I'm just going to trim my waist, take the wee curly ends off just to tidy things up. Now, this tail, if you take a wrap up underneath, that should sort of spread it enough. You don't need to come through and separate them, that's, that's spread enough for me. I'm going to come up. To the end of those butts, which is sort of my, into my thorax area, I'm going to tie in my hackle. I'm using just a cream genetic neck, and you want to oversize your hackle, right? Uh, as a rough guide, I've already tied a fly with this hackle. Um, you want at least the body length, maybe a wee bit more. Right, in the hackle fibre or the hackle barb, because this is going to be your wing, and a spinner's wing is generally body length for most species. Now, I'm going to tie this in on its edge with the figure eight wrap. Right, we'll just do that again just so you can see it. I'm going to lay the feather with the good side facing the eye of the hook. I'm going to lay it on top of the shank. Take a, an X wrap in front of my side and behind the stem, then behind my side and in front of the stem. Then I'll repeat that to sort of lock it in. And then it's just a case of folding that waste piece down and tying it off. Right. I normally don't tie hackles and like that, That's this is like an old fashioned way of doing it, but um, usually it makes no difference, but for this pattern it actually can as a wee bit handy. Take my thread back. And then I'm going to get some dubbing for the, the body. It's just super fine and rusty brown. Just making a nice tight noodle. Always twisting in the same direction. Get it nice and tight. 
And if it's you've done a good job, you can get it up there. Slide it up a wee bit. Might need to tighten it a wee bit more after sliding it up. And then I'm just going to start winding my dubbing. And I've left just a tiny wee space. So I'm no impacting the tail with the dubbing. I'm just going to batter up with this. Make a nice smooth body. I need a wee bit more. Smooth that out, and I'm going to continue with my dubbing and build a wee thorax. Tiny amount more. And then I'm going to come to the front and I'm just going to build a wee false head. That'll do. And if you want to, you can put a wee half hitch on there just to sort of save everything at that point. Take my thread back, park it behind the hackle. And now I'm going to wind forward and I'm looking to build a nice dense amount of hackle here so that's I don't know four turns forward I've trapped a couple of fibers we'll just get them fixed but four forward and then I'm going to come back through Get to the back, you can see it. just if you just brush the hackle fibers forward, they'll sort of stay a wee bit and that lets you come in and tie that off. Then I'm going to come in. Trim that away. And if there's any wee errant fibres going back or whatever, take them away as well. Just make sure you don't trap in here and then just come back and rub the body with a thread on the way back. It's a wee bit extra durability, and then at the wee blank spot, you can set a whip finish. You probably need to use your hands to reach over. Come in, tighten that off, trim. Now, obviously, that hackle's massive, right? This is the this is a good thing about this. Sort of I'm just going to come in with money though, make sure I've not trapped any hackle fibres, and then I'm going to come in underneath. Cut. We cut right close. It's close as I can. It's close as I can go to the underside of the hook. Flush.
that's good enough for me. And I'm going to come in with a wee pen that matches the dubbing. Just block that in so that when viewed from below, as the fish is going to see it, it looks like they thought like a continuation. the thorax and then I'm going to come in with some head cement now as I say this is I would say should be your, like your sort of first choice spinner pattern because it's very easy to see unlike most and they really th I mean, if they've been really picky and you're getting refusals, well, it might be this. If you can honestly say it's not your presentation or the size or something, then you might want to change to a, a different pattern. But I would always start with this because I can see it. And you can see this when it's nearly pitch black, you know, this bright white wing. Now, I've put cement on the whip finish. I'm just going to take a small blob and apply it to the underside here where the, the ink is. That will obviously lock the ink but it will also lock the hackles in position so you don't have any, any creeping underneath. One there I don't like, I'm just going to take away. You know. But there you go, semicircle spinner. As I say, tie them to suit the different mayfly species. Well worth having, the summer nights up in the river. So I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please uh, remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Take lines, guys. Bye.